Then we went back to Montana for a Met back to Montana. We were uh, we were supposed to set up and recruit an RS1, which we had a lot of trouble with. Well, we did. And we did. But we didn't get enough people. And it was difficult living an intentional missional life in Montana on your own. Uh, well, we didn't quite understand what that was, obviously. Yeah, but... <laughs> You know, so it was like, okay, we're going to I don't think go. anybody did back then. No. No, no, but they talked about it a lot. <laughs> and, uh, you were really sure you were supposed to be doing it, because everybody had, else was. <laughs> I was finishing my junior year in college, and I was a theology major. And so we decided to leave Montana and become an intern in the order in Fifth, in Fifth City during uh, the, the fall of 1970. Yeah. And I think we actually... I went to summer You went 70. to summer 70. I was doing I my student teaching. 70. I taught for two years without yeah. student teaching, so I and had to finally get that done. You summer. were doing a, you were the dorm mother yeah, or something like that. I was a like dorm mother and a dorm on, on campus, so I didn't have to pay any rent, which was like Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, but then we arrived um, in the fall uh, in, uh, in Chicago to do our internship in the order. And, um, uh, that was quite an experience. We wrecked our car the second day we were there. We had this nice, cute little Volkswagen. What uh, do you mean? Bug. I wrecked it. I got hit. <laughs> you got hit. No, we there was a car it. coming down. I can't remember what's uh, the the street that crosses the out in front. What was the street that was out in front? Anyway, there was a. Oh, Bruce Parkway. No. No, it's, it's right Trumbull. in front of the institute. Right in front Trumbull. of the the the, uh, uh, the West Side house there. Trumbull. Trumbull, Trumbull and then there was a cross street. There was Trumbull. a cross street, that, and there was a car. I was pulling into that intersection, and there was this big old Cadillac that was barreling down the. We had a bug. The cross street, and I had a Volkswagen bug, and he hit me right in the front of the car, slammed me into the door, and spun me completely around, headed opposite way, going down the street. Nearly got killed, and it was a hit and run. The guy took off, and uh, so that totaled our car, <laughs> which was just as well probably because. What are we going to do with we that? couldn't afford to yeah. drive it any place. Yeah. It was still drivable, actually. It was just one of those officially told, but... But Pat yeah. taught in, the, in Manly? Judy and I and taught Judy? together in Manly mm -hmm. Upper yeah. Grade Center. And yeah. you were the... And weren't you the guild? It was the Education Guild? Uh, you and... Uh, what's her name? Uh, oh. And I was in the University Guild with the Jenkinses. And a bunch of other um, long-haired uh, hippie <laughs> types, <laughs> and we had a black John purse. John Lloyd. John Lloyd. Wasn't and it? John. And we we drove. Uh, and and Dorothy Richard, I think, was yeah, Dorothy, and, and uh, one of the Ware. Michael Ware. Yeah. And uh, Laura. Demick. 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 Yeah. Michael and, and Laura. And uh, so we would take the hearse down to University of Illinois. Chicago Circle campus every day because the L was too dangerous to, to take. To get on. And so we had this huge hearse and everybody would pile into this hearse and we'd pull up in front of the library at at, uh, at Circle campus and open up the back door and all these oh, hippies would fall roll out, out you know. And, and uh, kind of roll into the library. We would roll into the library the and then take over <laughs> one of the study rooms in the library. And then uh, Jenkins would put up the timeline on the blackboard in there with everybody's classes for the day and study plans, and then and then that the day would be set, and then people would basically go back, to lay down, and take a nap. <laughs> you know, and every time I would come back in after a class, it would be like somebody had gassed the room. You know, and people were <laughs> laid over flat on their face on their books and back like this and. Uh, you know, it, it was like people just passed out in the, in various stages of study, uh, probably after a couple of minutes. <laughs> and uh, but it was the Vietnam War, and a lot of people, a lot of us were kind of in school. I mean, the, it was really a period of deep angst about what am I doing in college? Why am I doing this? You know, I was a philosophy major, and uh, yeah, it was, you know, we, it, the classes I was taking were like comparison of Kierkegaard and Marx. And uh, also that fall was the fall after the Kent State shootings. Yes. And uh, so they had hung all the professors in effigy that summer, and there were no professors in any of the classrooms in the fall of, 
of 1970. There were only graduate students, and basically the graduate student would come in and say, well, what would you like to talk about today? And that's the way the classes were run. And it so was it was terrifying. just sort of, you know, a uh, free conversation.